the opportunity to present uh, Commute with Enterprise to the committee. Again, my name is John Martz, and I'm one of the original ride sharers. Decades before the iPhone, apps, and the Internet of Things, I worked for the Chrysler Corporation. In the late 70s, during the oil embargo, we heard about this program in Minnesota. 3M was providing employees with vans to get to and from work. We at Chrysler thought this was a great idea and began talking with employers around the nation about developing similar programs. This was the beginning of ride sharing, or as we call it, van pooling. That small program in Minnesota has grown into one of the largest and fastest growing modes of public transportation in the nation. And I am here today on behalf of Commute with Enterprise. Enterprise's journey in van pooling began almost two decades ago when it started offering van pools in Southern California. Since then, Enterprise has become the largest van pool service provider in the nation, with 12,000 vehicles in service and more than $425 million of at-risk private capital providing public transportation. Our most successful programs are in public-private partnerships, and we currently have more than 75 such arrangements across the country. Let me briefly describe what a van pool is. Van pools are a lot like carpools, just a little bit bigger. Commuters with common work schedules and destinations ride to and from work each day in a comfortable seven to 15 passenger van. We provide commute groups their vehicle, insurance, and maintenance to keep the van running in optimum condition. One person volunteers to be the primary driver of the van, and the participants drive, decide the driving, routing, and other arrangements themselves supported by our team. Typically, our customers commute each day 30 to 50 miles one way. Participants are assessed a monthly fee that is paid by the riders, their employers, or both. Commute with Enterprise provides service in rural areas, including projects at White Sands Missile Base in New Mexico, where we have more than 80 vans providing job access to 600 individuals, and in Florida, where we work with the Florida DOT to provide a job access program for rural and economically distressed communities. We also have programs in exurban and urban areas, such as the 1,340 van pools in partnership with LA County Metro. Additional case studies of our projects can be found in my written testimony, and there's about a dozen. But reducing over a billion passenger, passenger miles a year, our efforts put us uh, as a top 10 transit agency when considering annual passenger miles. The only difference is we provide service across the nation rather than in just one location. Van pooling is by far the safest mode of public transportation according to the National Transit Database statistics. In addition, we are by far the most efficient mode. For example, our partnership in Gulfport, Mississippi, which by the way began as a recovery effort following Hurricane Katrina, provides the region with 60% of the passenger miles for less than a half percent of the public subsidy of the agency. Similarly, in San Diego, California, we provide about 18% of the passenger miles in the region for just 2% of the overall public subsidy. As I mentioned, our programs work best in partnership with public agencies. Public agencies can use federal funds to create van pools Ample programs in the same way that you can use federal funds for buses. We comply with all FTA requirements, including ADA, labor laws, and Buy America. Our vehicles are assembled in plants across the nation, including Liberty, Missouri, East Liberty, Ohio, and the south side of Chicago. We strongly believe that more can be done to encourage the use of high-performing and innovative transportation solutions like van pooling. First and foremost, we believe a new grant program should be created that provides cities, counties, and other municipal agencies with funding to utilize innovative transportation solutions, both new and old, on the condition that the service follows all applicable FTA requirements and creates new service to areas that are not served or are underserved. This program should receive separate funding from the core transit program. We believe that if a project is successful, it should then be incorporated into the region's core program of projects so long as it meets certain conditions. We're working with Congressman Scott Perry on such a proposal in hopes of providing service to the thousands of his constituents traveling more than 60 miles one way each day to work in either Baltimore, Philadelphia, or here in Washington, D.C. Also, as additional transit funding is hopefully secured in reauthorization, we believe a significant portion of any new transit dollars should be allocated through existing performance formulas to encourage agencies to look at highly efficient service options, such as van pooling and microtransit for job access, first last mile, and rural transportation needs. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions.